Hello and welcome to our first Our Performance Tips, our winter weather hazard safety check-in. It feels like perfect timing as the weather changes here in the Tri-Cities and as the entire state of Washington gets a cold front right now. Um, thank you for joining us on this rescheduled event. I'm starting to feel like uh, Groundhog Day here. We tried to do this a week ago, and I'm so thankful that you're joining us today. I'm your host, Jessica Morgan. And uh, before we begin, I want to go over a little bit about the ON24 platform that you have joined us on today. You will notice off to the left, there is a question and answer section. Uh, feel free throughout the presentation to submit questions to us. Uh, and off to the right, you will notice the speaker bio. You will notice some additional information for you to download, including our company's website. And at the very bottom, there is a menu bar that has a little bit more information and has the ability to send this uh, webinar to a colleague or friend who might find this information valuable. There's a way to contact us directly. Um, and feel free to move things around. Each of these little squares can move around. You can minimize them when you're done with them. Uh, you will notice that we have two upcoming events listed that you can register for. So the first one is our big continuing education event. This will be on Friday the 26th at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and that will be with Joe SD Sr. And it will be on the change management and the control imperative. Why do some improvement ideas flourish while others flounder? This will be a 60 minute discussion where he will share practical insights and experience gained from working with successful leaders who have learned to stay in control personally and professionally when the rest of the world appears to be spinning out of it. Uh, you can also register for next week's Our Performance Tips, which will be exposure risks of bloodborne pathogens. And that will be hosted by Seth Gully, one of our uh, performance improvement specialists. And again, that is a half an hour check-in next Wednesday. So uh, it is my honor to introduce you to Bill Murray, a.k.a. Joe S.C. Jr., as we discuss our winter weather safety. There we go. There you are. Yeah. Perfect. I was going to leave the presentation all to you in a surprise moment, one of those ahas. Yay! <laughs> if that happens again, just give it about three seconds, and I'll, I'll re-log and log back on. I don't know what happened. Perfect. Well, we're working so, yeah, now. So I'll, perfect. So I'll go ahead and start up. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, we're going to go through this our performance tip that Jessica talked about, and it's on winter safety. Uh, very appropriate for right now. A lot of you might have nice sunny weather and 50 to 60 degrees, but at least where we're at in Washington State, uh, big storms come, and they call it a lowland storm. So it's going to hit everybody, not just the mountains like where I'm at. And that'll be tomorrow and Saturday. So some unexpected conditions. Uh, where I am and why this is important to me is because I am up in heavy winter weather. And so I've been up here only about four months. We're in the middle of the mountains. We get about you know eight to 10 feet of snow a season. It drops about two feet at a time. So some of the stuff that we've had to learn and these are these main topics would be that, that walking safety, and I'll go through that, and also working. So various types of equipment, uh, different types of stuff you do in the winter. So when we talk about change, that's one of the biggest changes for us is, and, and for you possibly. You go home at the end of the day, it's sunny, you see the ground, you can walk on the sidewalk, you can look at your grass, and the next morning you wake up inevitably and you got half a foot or even three inches, even an inch and a half of black ice is just as bad. And so it's one of those unexpected conditions. And uh, now you actually not only have to get to work, but you have to walk to your car scrape off your car. There's so many things that are included in, in winter safety. And on top of that, you get a little panicky. For me, I got about a thousand feet of uh, driveway just to get out. I only have one exit point from my house. So just to get down the road is, is complicated and I have to shovel and plow and blow. So there's a lot of the tips that I'll talk about that we've had to do that we've learned. We've made mistakes multiple times up here and just wanted to share some of those tips for you. Before I get into it, the intention of this is you will have this video, we'll have it on our YouTube channel, uh, Lucas OPT, and you can use it in your, in your Monday morning uh, tailgates, your back to works. So that's kind of this type of presentation. So I'm hoping you can use that in the future. So we'll go through each one of these. Walking safety, we start just kind of, this, this picture is pretty appropriate. 
Uh, this kind of looked like me in October when we got nine inches overnight and it was unexpected. And we had planned all along how we're going to plow, how we're going to blow, how we're going to shovel, all those pieces. And then it became reality. And so I think I walked about 30 feet out in the snow and realized my road was gone. I couldn't see my stairs. It was a whole other ball game. And so I walked like this guy out in the middle of nowhere and got immediately overwhelmed. So some of the walking safety that we've learned, um, and I'll go to the next slide, is because walking is it's important to me looking at this based just on the stats. So if you look at the U.S., 27% of all non-fatal workplace injuries are slips, trips, and falls. In the U.K., it's 37%, with 28% of it being fatalities. That's a huge number on both fronts. That's not little. And they put that the leading causes is going to be those uh, uneven floor surfaces. So we'll talk about those. Unsuitable floor coverings, that happens a lot in the winter involving area rugs or those rugs you have in the interior of building. The wet, slippery floors, there's a Y missing, and I'll, 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 that's, I own that one. It's not slipper floors. But uh, those wet, slippery floors are awful. And like I said, it's these unexpected conditions. You go to work, and it's normal one day. You come to work the next day. Not only are you driving through bad weather or getting to your car in the first place in the bad weather, now you're walking into buildings, and the conditions completely change. That change in levels as well. And and I'll, I'll go one one uh, one interesting part of that with the change in levels is back in medieval times, they I don't think they had much for human performance improvement, but the fortresses would build their stairs at uneven at uneven depths because humans have to have the same depth on stairs. And if you've ever noticed that, you've been walking on the same level and you've tripped on something, tripped on a sidewalk that got pushed up by a tree root. Uh, stairs are the same way. Now, they did it intentionally. They did it so that the enemies or people invading didn't memorize those stairs. They didn't know the depth and they would trip. All the armor would clatter. Obviously, they would hear that and they'd be fine. Now, none of us are trying to make uneven surfaces at our buildings. So, you know, operations or HR safety trips. And we are not malicious. Usually it's actually more innocent than that. What happens is we'll go in and we'll see either an uneven surface or a rug that's bunched up. And we say, okay, maybe we'll, we'll fix that in a little bit. Or, oh, I got to run, but I'll fix that later. Well, you've seen it, but the person behind you hasn't. And I'll talk about that in a minute, a little bit more in depth. So the next piece, and we're going to run a video. This is my property where I live. And I want you to look. You don't have to chat it or, or Q&A it. Uh, um, I want you to count what you think as far as the transitions go from when I'm walking. What I mean by that is like a transition from ice to bare concrete, bare concrete to steps. So just think when you're watching this, how many you see. A special note when you're watching this, the camera is pointed down so you can see the transitions. My head is not pointed down. You never want to you never want to walk on slippery surface or regular surface with your looking down. And some of us have heads that are a little bit heavier than others, so you tend to fall forward. Um, it's the camera is pointed down. So just so just so you're aware, I'm not walking dangerously in this. So we'll go ahead and run this video. So if you're thinking on that one, if you're looking at all, if you counted the transitions, uh, it's that's good, but it's kind of a hypothetical because it's it's almost countless to check those transitions. There are so many different areas to walk. For one, I had stairs going to snow, 
had snow going to bare concrete, bare concrete going up onto pure ice. I had elevated work. So I, I mean, I had slopes. I was going down. Some of those spots look like puddles. They're not water. Some of them are, but some of them are actually just black ice. And so the whole time I'm trying to think of where I'm walking, I'm being intentional. So I'm walking slower. I'm trying to get to where I need to be. Uh, it's, it's, it's dangerous out there as far as the hazards go. Winter has so many. It's not just walking safety. So one of the tools that we use, and, and I use it because human performance improvement, if you have not researched human performance improvement or have had any practice in it, on our YouTube channel, we have a human performance improvement playlist. And I would definitely go look at that. I would encourage you because uh, human performance improvement is, is a mindset. And so it's not a program. It's not a procedure or a checklist. And, and some people have, have done it that way, but it's, it truly is a mindset and it's, and it's how you, how you behave at work. And I do it as well at home. One of the tools are safe. So I put on here being safe while walking. So the safe tool is an acronym. And when I'm thinking about the winter safety and walking specifically, I'll go through each one of these. So that summarize the critical steps is your S. The critical steps in this activity, for instance, me walking out there, is literally my critical steps, like my footsteps. And it's not just me walking every step. That'd be way too many critical steps. But the critical steps are I'm coming off my stairs. I'm walking onto bare concrete from ice or vice versa. So I'm summarizing those critical steps before I go out. I'm sitting there with my coffee on my porch thinking about going out there. This is what I'm doing. The end, and, and an easier way to think about summarizing critical steps is what do you have to do today? What do I have to do today? Well, I have to walk and go get my equipment and go plow my road. Anticipating the error traps, that is, where could you make a mistake? So when you're looking at mine, some of those common error traps are going to be my insufficient footwear. That could be an error. I don't have the right footwear out there. Uh, the transition, something that's you know greater than a quarter of an inch, like I talked about with those different sidewalks. A lot of moisture gets in my road, and some of my road is actually warped now. And that's, you know, from the day before it was flat, the next day it's got a dip. So I'm looking at those pieces for those air traps. Then I'm going to foresee the consequences. So what is the worst thing that could happen? When you think about this at work or at home, we don't mean what's the worst that could happen or anything. A meteor is going to fall out of the sky. That's, that's great. No, what's the worst that can happen with these critical steps and where those errors are? The, the consequences, foreseeing those consequences, are great. Uh, I was out in my parking lot in November when we got the nine inches. Uh, I am from the desert originally, so different world. I'm a little overwhelmed in the morning, uh, and I got to get off the road. I got to go to Tri-Cities from where I live. So now I got a 1,000 feet of road with nine inches of snow. It's cold. I have not used my equipment ever. This will be the first time. And so I went outside, and I'll show you. Here's my summer shoes. No, the title of the brand is not Summer Shoe. Uh, I thought they were good winter shoes until I walked outside, turned the corner, and I went from looking vertically in the sky to on my back. And it took me about five to 10 seconds to realize how bad it hurt. And so those shoes were quickly retired. They were not the right footwear. So that consequence for footwear specifically, I went and got something better. And this is just my winter shoe. Got something with a better grip. So that's just a little bit of that, that, that foreseeing the consequences. So the defenses, that's your evaluate the defenses, is how will I prevent it? If, as I just showed you my footwear, if the only thing I'm looking at for defenses is my PPE, I'm not looking deep enough. I am already too late on evaluating my defenses, I'll be honest. If all I'm worrying about is my PPE, I'm at the last stage of my defense. And what I mean by that is I'm going to go ahead prior to snow or prior to I know ice is coming possibly. I'm going to snow melt. I'm going to shovel critical walkways if there's some snow before I plow so I can walk. I'm thinking about all those plans, like my wife and I sitting there before we do this job. That's how I'm evaluating the defenses. It's not just footwear. At your work, it can be engineer controls like barriers, uh, admin controls, some signage. The, the nice part with, and I'll show you these, is the yak tracks. A lot of people have seen these. They put a little thing that says, one side says heel, one side says toe. Uh, I did not, I ignored that the first time. I'll be honest, I didn't even know that existed. And so they looked pretty hokey until I put them on the right way. So that is the safe tool. Like I said, use it at your home, use it at work. It's a very simple tool from a human performance improvement aspect, and it's a good conversation to have. So the other part of this is someone should fix that. 
And I, I mentioned that a few minutes ago is that somebody sees a rug and they say, hey, somebody will get to that or an open cabinet. Well, they're probably coming back. Well, that's that's not good. It's, it's a right and responsibility by you as a worker and at home for your family uh, to fix something immediately. So a few of those immediates are clean up those spills and debris immediately. A lot of people trip. You saw those 27 percent, 28 percent, depending on where you live on slips, trips and falls it is simple housekeeping. So keep up, stay organized, fix those carpets. That's a big piece. Inspect your facility. I just talked about housekeeping. Go around before you even get there. And then obviously the right footwear. Those are some very basic. You've probably heard those for years because everybody has these winter safety uh, checklists in the year. Part of human performance improvement, some additional tools are uh, self-checking. That's a tool. After I do my safe, I'm going to make sure I have the right footwear. Did the condition change and it snowed uh, overnight and now I got a little bit of ice versus bear? And so I'm going to look at that. Do I feel good? You know, and that's not just am I sick or, you know, do I just not feel well? It's am I stressed? Am I panicking about the environment where I'm going to put myself on a time pressure? I'm going to start rushing with the shovel, rushing with tools, walking too fast, which is exactly what I did with my little summer shoes there, and, and fall over and hurt yourself. Well, not up here. If I can't do work and I can't get off my road or I get injured for six to eight weeks, it's the same as you at home. Think about the consequences of that. It's not just your injury. You got work loss. You got your family now has to rely on doing the work themselves sometimes. So it's, it gets hard. The peer checking is another one. When my wife and I go outside, if we plowed and we've created now a slippery spot by the door where it wasn't before, we'll tell each other, hey, when you go outside, I just shoveled that up. It's a little bit slick. So just make sure you watch yourself. Or, hey, I'm going to put some ice melt down. Give it about half an hour before you go out. That's a peer check. So talk to your peers before you go on the job and say, hey, this changed or this seems different. We should probably talk through this. So those are just a, a few tools along with the safe dialogue uh, from a human performance improvement aspect. So I'm going to move from walking safety. By all means, throw a Q&A out there or a chat if you need to. But that is the walking. The walking is very important. Working, we go into a couple other things. So some of those hazards, real quick. Heart attack or cardiac arrest, they are different. But what happens, and if you see what cardiologists say, we go from, especially this year and into last year, we go from doing nothing or very light duty through the nice, pleasant summer, spring, fall. We don't have to do much work. Then all of a sudden, we get snow overnight. Well, for one, we're not acclimated. We haven't conditioned our bodies. And the cold constricts your blood vessels. So there's a, that's a bad combo. And so you put all those together and you go out and start working hard, a lot of people have heart problems. So make sure you're rested, condition yourself prior to going out there. Machinery-wise, uh, making sure you have the right tools and equipment and have them on you. Jerry Harbour talks about it in Lean Human Performance Improvement. He calls it psychological distance. And all that means is the hassle factor. What is the hassle of you going to pick up some safety equipment? Uh, the example would be, if I don't have my earbuds with me, I just leave them in the garage and I go run my snowblower, I realize I need them because it's loud and I go grab them, put them on, I take them off when I turn it off, I leave them up again where I'm at and I go down the road. The distance of your safety equipment, if it's not right next to you, we generally tend to forget it after a few steps. And what I mean by that is, oh, it's the last piece, I'm going to clean up, I'm going to do one more cut with this chainsaw, let's say, or one more run with this snowblower. I really don't need those earbuds. Well. You can see where that could go wrong. Now we've kind of now we've now we've we have a hazard. We didn't prepare for it, or it's psychologically distant. It's physically distant from us. So some of those solutions are: make sure you have your tools next to you, make sure you have all your PPE next to you, your shoes, your shovels, whatever it is in winter. Don't have it in different spots, and I include your gloves. I've done it multiple times where the gloves are in the dryer. You know what? I'll be a few minutes. Next thing I know, 15 minutes later, I'm in running my hands under warm water because and and knowing it, going, why didn't I just put them on? Well, because it, it just slipped my mind. It's physically distant from me. The last piece is shoveling. I'm going to show a video real quick on shoveling. Shoveling has been the hardest piece because it's, it's literally manual labor. And it tools and equipment that's powered is awesome up here. But some stuff has to be done hand shoveled. Where you live, that might be all you need. But real quick on some proper tips on shoveling.
So that video was of me, obviously. And it's if you look at the scenery, that there was a hose bib out there. It was about five feet high. So I'm currently standing on five feet of snow. Now, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. If I snowed, if I shoveled that slow as I did in the example, I probably wouldn't need to shovel. It'd all be melted by spring. I'd be out there for four and a half months, okay? It was just a very slow, exaggerated way to do it. But what I mean by that is I was trying to show you keeping the back straight. We always start bending over. We start hurting our back. We haven't conditioned all winter. Doing slow movements, not doing full heavy shovel. We get out there and we want to get it done quick and we get overexerted. We're pushing heavy amounts of snow, depending on if it's wet snow or dry snow. And then mo and most, one of the most important ones is not tw twisting. So we'll go to shovel in straight and then we'll throw it behind us or throw it somewhere else. And we're twisting our back and our legs over and over. Eight at night, we can't get off the couch. So, you know, between the walking and the shoveling, those are the two that I do the most. And even doing it properly, the shoveling starts, you know, you start getting hand injuries, uh, strains. And so it does get hard. But doing that, that proper technique, thinking about it before you go out there, the critical steps when you're shoveling. So do that safe when you're shoveling. You know, what are the errors that are going to happen when I do this? What are some of those consequences and how am I going to defend against that? So that is the end of the presentation for me. We did have, and I don't know if you saw it, Jessica, we had a chat. And was that from you? Oh, that's from you. Okay. So I'll leave it open. We have a few minutes. If we have any questions, um, please throw them out by all means. Uh, we did have one question come in, okay. uh, specifically if those HPI principles that you discussed, if um, after the presentation, we could email out the participants um, what those acronyms were with maybe a brief description of it so they can reference it in the future and maybe kind of pass that along to some of their colleagues. So that was one of the questions yeah. that we had come in. Yeah, absolutely. We can send that after. Those are some those are some of the basic tools. I like to shot I like to start with those basic tools if somebody's watching has not researched HPI thoroughly. So some of those very basic tools that are a mindset. Remember, it's not a program. I'm not waking up saying, have I hit my HPI goals today? It truly is a belief and I need to start doing this safe in the morning before I go to work. Absolutely, we're there. We'll wait a little bit longer for any more questions uh, that anyone might have. But uh, I know for me, how many times I go out and shovel my front and I'm in a hurry because I've got kids or I'm trying to get back in the house to get back to work and I, you're right, eight o'clock, God, I'm getting old. No, it's just because I'm not shoveling properly. So uh, um, I uh, wanna remind everybody while we wait a little bit longer for any questions that you might have to while we are still running this webinar to take a chance to download any information that you might want to, we've got our company brochure for you or to take the time to register for next week's our performance tips and our end of the month continuing education event. So take the time to do that. Uh, I don't see any other questions coming in today. So uh, look for an email from uh, either myself or Junior uh, regarding some of those acronyms and the SAFE and the self-check uh, so that you kind of have those top of mind. I would love to thank you all for joining us today and thanks for bearing with us with our little technical glitch at the beginning. Uh, maybe I jinxed us with talking about Groundhog's Day a little too much at the beginning, but man, I was getting a little worried there, Joe. I'm glad you were, you were able to come. Yeah, so was I. <laughs> so again, thank you all for joining us for our first yes, thank you very installment much. of our performance tips. This has been great, and we look forward to uh, seeing you all next week.